Good morning. Uh, this is my first time to Singapore. It's very nice, but very hot. So thank you very much. So um, this is my presentation about um, our platform called Findadoc. Um, so before me, Peruvi um, gave the WHO perspective, I think, and she mentioned community-based organizations. And I would say that's what this presentation is about, um, an example. So um, I just want to start with uh, author's acknowledgments. Um, we have an international team. Um, Chunyan is actually on the team as well. Um, and this work was supported by a grant from the Toyota Foundation, which is a private um, foundation from the Toyota company, but um, unrelated in Japan. So I just want to start with a little uh, participation <laughs> thing. So please raise your hand if you have if you now consider yourself a migrant. Migrant, right, includes immigrant. OK. Raise your hand if you have ever considered yourself a migrant. OK, there's more hands. Nice. And then, um, have you ever searched for sexual or reproductive health care while being away from your usual country of residence? So this includes even temporary <laughs> stay. OK, there's a lot of people here. Great. And then last, um, have you navigated in a language other than your native language in your search for such health care? Right, OK. And uh, maybe you can sympathize with how tough that is. <laughs> so that's what we're trying to address in this project. But let me give you a little background on um, Japan's uh, migration situation. So Japan has a very robust um, system of universal health care, as um, Dr. Tamuruma can <laughs> attest to. Um, the immigration, immigrant population, we can use that word, um, is projected to reach 3% uh, in, very soon. And so in 2021, um, if we look at the um, latest AIDS, HIV uh, diagnostic information, more than 15% of uh, these diagnoses are among non-Japanese. So we don't necessarily have to say immigrant, but non-Japanese. And so we can see there's just, you know, do the math, a, a big disparity. So um, yes, the government is starting to look into more, you know, immigrants. Immigrants are being um, are a very important piece of, uh, very important part of the workforce for the Japanese economy. And so, this is one of the first surve national surveys of non-Japanese about healthcare. And so, up to forty percent of migrants had trouble identifying healthcare. And so, um, migrant, and specifically in the HIV space. Um, there's studies that showing migrants with low Japanese level or lo low knowledge of the testing framework in Japan are the least likely to get care. Um, there's a higher loss to follow up rate among migrants versus Japanese, you know, in a few studies of uh, healthcare clinics in the real world. So this um, brought our organization um, to, add, I mean, several different people. So I'll explain how we all came together, but separately to ask, how can we lower barriers to health, equitable healthcare for these vulnerable populations. So this is um, an example of what exists right now in Japan. And so this is a multilingual um, HIV testing site. So you might be, oh, OK, well, there's already something here, right? But if we look um, closely, right, so there's thorough information on the HIV testing process, which is you know, unique to Japan. Um, but the, as many things in Japan are, um, any, many healthcare-related things, it's a static list of hyperlinks. Um, and so there's no place for feedback, right? This is just kind of a anonymous website that exists. Um, and so, you know, there's not, it's not really, you know, engaging back and forth. Um, and so this is also funded by an academic um, grant from the Ministry of Health. And so, um, you know, the long-term sustainability of such and um, engagement, continuing engagement in the community with this kind of... Um, this kind of platform is questionable. So um, you can look at you know, the list. They give some different resources in different prefectures. Um, just click on a random link. It's broken. So you know, these things have to be updated as websites. There's 47 prefectures in Japan. Update their website. So that's um, you know, less than ideal. So how do we make this kind of information more dynamic, interactive, and authentic, which are you know, big uh, terms in this uh, digital age? And so also we have to keep in mind that the migrant population is, tends to be younger. So you know, the working age population and within the working population, uh, 18 to 35 is about you know, almost 60% of the migrants in Japan. 
30, 18 to 35 years old, I'm sorry. And so I just want to give you a little background on the Find a Doc project. So the pilot actually started in summer 2021 as a response to the like, community, you know, a facilitated response to the COVID-19 pandemic. And so in Japan, the vaccine rollout was a little bit slower than it was in other places. There were a lot of, um, a lot of anxiety in the foreign um, community about how to get vaccines quickly. Um, and so this uh, really popped up from a uh, programmer who was interested in you know, social justice, this kind of um, helping people around her. She, as myself, she is also American. And so she set up this website that is a, a database of a crowdsourced database of clinics that were giving um, vaccines, you know, kind of a waiting list. It was a little bit of a niche area but it was um, at its peak, you know, 70,000 page hits in one day. So that was, I mean, a lot, obviously. And then we had 20 plus languages um, that were checked by native speakers. So that was, um, you know, really great, but it was really, you know, an emergency time. So how can we, now that we're out of the emergency, how can we keep something like this going more sustainable, more generalizable to everyday life? In Japan, so Find a Doc attracted a lot of media attention, um, but I'll just focus on the design issues, as you can see on the left side, my left. Um, uh, so there was, it was put together quickly. There was not a lot of time for user t design testing. It was a static database, um, so it was you know just a list, and then difficult to edit the source text for languages. So it was difficult for native speakers without help to you know, go into the coding and um, fix the the wording. And so sustainability, sustainability issues, the, um, yes, as, as we know, the, the COVID pandemic ended, thankfully. And so it was not needed for a long time. It was a dif bit difficult for non-technical people to uh, contribute maybe as much as they wanted to, just because of the, um, the back end of the website was not as user-friendly as maybe it could be with more sustained um, attention. And then long-term issues in... Um, yeah, teaching the source code to maybe new programmers, younger programmers, right? Kind of putting out, um, uh, what is it? A, uh, a, a plan for moving in the future. So the original idea for, this is, you know, find doc, I can say 2.0. So the original idea was kind of a Yelp-like site for medical facilities in Japan that have multilingual support. And that includes either the medical facility or itself or the physicians. And so we'd like to make, we thought, you know, this is the original idea, making something where we can have all these languages talking to each other. They're seeing the same, same information, but in a different language, you know, their own language. So this is an example of, you know, a pregnant woman, um, English, puts a review or information about um, her clinic that she attended. Um, then, you know, someone in Vietnamese can uh, see that review. An Arabic family can see that review, but also importantly, in green, a Japanese healthcare provider can see that review or contribute, you know, information about their own clinic. Um, that would be, you know, contact information, location, language, things like that. So, you know, this is an iterative process. I think um, that's what I want to, you know, you to take away from this as a, the digital health um, intervention session. So we have, you know, lots of this in our um, collaborators in the audience who helped with these designs. So thank you very much, Kay. And so our final wireframes uh, for the MVP, which is minimum viable product, which is often um, termed in digital, digital space. <laughs> and so in this situation, we're, I mean, you know, we're talking about HIV. And so in Japan, there's a series, a very good system of low cost and free healthcare, I mean, free HIV testing, and also anonymous HIV testing, but they're not always overlapping. And so our idea is as we expand the platform to have, you know, special um, markers for these kind of, these kinds of um, facilities. And so thinking about, you know, the maybe non-Japanese speaking population in Japan is a vulnerable population. And then within that population, the, um, People needing HIV um, testing is more you know, vulnerable within the vulnerable. So I think it's a really um, important uh, piece to add to our platform as we move forward.
So the first year of progress, right, this, um, we got this grant last year. So we've um, talked with uh, lawyers, pro bono, you know, but kind of realized that maybe the review part of the site is not super good for the first, first part, um, just because there's a lot of things about defamation and things. We don't want to get involved with that. So we're going to keep everything positive um, and maybe not, not have that part of it for the first um, rollout. But stakeholder feedback, we've completed the wireframes. We have a functional prototype. We're um, next week applying for nonprofit status. And um, so the challenges, right, the harmful, harm of, potential harm of the rating system. Um, and so we also want to get Japanese developers more involved because um, we do want to make this not a, you know, immigrant only website or something, but a more um, community and multilingual, everyone can be a part of it, very inclusive. Um, platform. So this is our coming soon page. And so um, on the last slide, though, I'll have a QR code that you can use. Um, but yeah, this is our, our plan, which we um, have shared with the foundation. And so we're developing, we've developed the platform. We need to, you know, expand it as much as possible. But there is now we're moving into more user, um, user interviews and um, more iterative, um, very what do we want to say, uh, detailed designs. Then we're working with dissemination and partnerships. So we're hoping as we roll out a real usable website and platform that we can start to approach local governments, um, see how they're interested. Because I think this can really fill a gap between you know what I showed before, the static websites with a list of links um, and something more that's more interactive. And then, so this is all crowdsourced. So, People, um, users are submitting the entries and they're kind of keeping track. Of course, we're moderating it, but you know, users can check the the links. They see, oh, it's broken. You know, they they just let us know. That there's going to be lots of um, contact. What is it? Contact uh, workflows within the the site. And so we'll you know then as moderators go and um, fix that or you know confirm that the site the clinic is a real clinic. It really has the um, languages that it says it has, or that the user says it has. And then finally, um, we're going, we're planning on doing a randomized control trial. And so that's really to show the value of this um, platform and that the outcome of that um, randomized, randomized control trial would be something like well-being scale. And so that's really what we want to, uh, because it's so diverse, you know, healthcare is so diverse that People feeling, I think, a lot in a lot of times in Japan, and speaking as a um, immigrant myself in Japan, um, you, just knowing that there's a tool there that you can rely on if you ever needed it, um, really kind of makes you feel more secure in your position. And so I, that's what where we're going with that kind of very general, uh, very general um, scale, maybe scaled outcome of well-being. So anyway, more maybe I'll come back and talk about that in a few years. So anyway, we have um, a Q big QR code here. You can scan it um, if you'd like. And this will take you to a Google form to give any feedback on the, the idea, the design, any ideas you might have. We really appreciate it. And um, you can also s click and um, see our coming soon page. And you know, if you want to put your email there to get updates when we officially launch the site, you can do that as well. So. Thank you very much. Um, I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference, and I'll take questions later. Thank you.